What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel and in this video we are going to be talking about collections in Kotlin. They are part of the Kotlin Standard Library. They give you all sorts of ways to work off of lists, sets, maps, all sorts of collections. Uh, it's one of the more powerful features of Kotlin that's just baked into the language. So with that, I'm just going to give an overview of what you can expect from this series, give you a chance to chime in, ask some questions ahead of time before I've you know, wrapped up the, the series, and then also show you kind of how you can follow along uh, from, from your computer. So first up, let's go over to IntelliJ. And over here I have everything sort of set up for how I want to go through the series. So for all of our examples, we're going to use this library object, which contains a list of books. And the book itself contains a title. It can contain one or more authors, one or more genres. And it will have a price, which is represented as a integer. So if it's 1999, we would represent it as 1999 like that. From there, we also have a author class, which just has the name of the author. And then for our genre, we have a sealed class, which um, or genre is a sealed class. And then we have fiction as one part of the sealed class, and then nonfiction is another. And then within fiction, for example, we have classic, fantasy, science fiction. For nonfiction, we have biography, business, feminism, politics, and self-help. And then for um, all of the sealed classes, we are just overriding the two-string function just to give us a nicer read of, of what it will show up as. And so from there, with our library, I've created a bunch of books ranging from, you know, fiction and uh, nonfiction. So all of these would take a while uh, to type by hand. So that's why I'm going to recommend that you pull down what I have on GitHub as a at least a starter place, a, a, a good good spot to start. And so in order to do that, we will um, open up GitHub and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through what that looks like. So over here on this repository, so it's just the Learn Kotlin repository. It's the, the repository that I'm using for all of my Kotlin tutorial series. You can just come over here and find this clone or download option. And if you are already familiar with Git, you know, you just can uh, take this and clone it yourself. Alternatively, if you don't want to use Git or you're not familiar with it, you're not comfortable with using it, you can also do this download zip option. And so from here, you would just download the zip file and then open it like any other coding example that you have. All right, so jumping back to IntelliJ, I'm just going to update this uh, real quick. So for this series, I'm going to move to a collections package as part of our main source directory. So all of my current examples are just in a test directory. It just sort of it makes things a little bit easier to, to break them up for my working examples I'm going to talk through and, and live code and everything like that. So real quick, we'll just create a new package called collections. And then for collections, we are going to create a new Kotlin file or class. It's just going to be a file called library. And then over here, I'm just going to copy this over entirely. And then because I already have the library in the main source directory, I should be safe getting rid of that library. And you can see, yeah, so there's, there's no, no breaking changes. So with that, I'm just going to come over here and delete my library. This step is not one that you would need to take. 
Um, this is just for my own cleanup. All right, cool. So the last part of this video is just walking you through what I'm going to be talking about. And so this gives you a better idea of, of what you can sort of expect. So part one is going to be talking about iterators. And so how do you iterate over a list of items or how do you iterate over a collection? Um, so sets and, and things like that. The next part we'll be talking about the map operator. So this is one of the operators where if you don't understand how map works, it's very difficult to get much more uh, value out of it. So the map operator is one of the main ones that you you really want to understand from the start. The next operator, which kind of segues nicely, would be the zip operator. So we'll talk about that and kind of how you can use it in some of its different permutations. Then we'll talk about the flatten operator. So if you have a list of things, how do you flatten that into, you know, just its own list. So we'll, we'll talk more about that and how that works. Then we'll talk about the associate operator. Everything with that, kind of how you would use it, when you would use it. The filter operator. So this is another one that gets used quite a bit by, by me uh, and I assume by others. So if you have a list of items, how do you filter it down to just the items that you care about. And then we'll talk about the partition operator. So if you have a list, how do you separate that into two lists, two partitions? Then we'll talk about grouping operators and the group by function. And so this is one where it can take a bit to understand how it works, but once you understand really how to use it, it can become a really powerful operator. And then eight, or I guess nine, with the way that uh, this is gonna be numbered. This is the sort by operator. So common, a lot of times you'll wanna just sort things. And so understanding how to, how to sort them in Kotlin will make your life much easier. And then we have the reduce operator and how that works. So that one will be a fun one to, to talk through. And then the last part of at least the initial series of what I'm planning is the sequence. So when would you want to use sequence over not sequence? Also, what the heck is sequence? So we'll talk about that. Uh, and I think there are some really interesting trade-offs just even while I was going through and putting together this uh, material, was able to learn some things about sequence that I myself just wasn't aware of. All right, and so that is really it though. Uh, again, by the time you are watching this video, you will already be able to go to the uh, GitHub repository, which will be linked in the description. You will be able to pull down any of this code and run it yourself. If you wanna work along with me, you can just simply pull down the, the code, keep the library as is. Again, there's just a lot of boilerplate code that I don't want anyone to have to type out. Uh, it was not fun for me to type. And then from there though, you can delete any of the other ones or if you just want to uh, delete the code or comment out the code, you can kind of do whatever you want, whatever works best for you. But I would strongly recommend pulling down the repository and uh, yeah, working, working from there. So with that, that's all that I have for this video. If there are anything, anything with the collections library that you would like me to go more in depth about, just let me know. I would be more than happy to record other breakout videos. You know, there are some operators I'm not going to talk about, like the distinct operator and some of the smaller ones where they can be pretty useful, but trying to give them a video in themselves, I don't want to do that unless people are actually requesting it. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you are excited for the rest of the series and you're not subscribed already, be sure to subscribe. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next one.